Ready to go green for the middle race of the round of 12 at Talladega Super Speedway. The wild card of the playoffs is set to get underway. Chase Elliott, Alex Bowman lead the way to the green flag immediately. You see cars fan out three wide here. Joey Logano being the first one at the outside. One driver locked into the round of eight, and that's the only safe driver here. That's Kevin Harvick with the win last week at Texas Motor Speedway. Jay, we have had uh, an interesting start to this round already where we see both Kurt Busch and Chastain, they had early exits, early issues, and they are both 40-plus points below the cut line. Fortunately for them, this is the perfect track to get themselves right back into the mix if they can avoid chaos and have other drivers a part well, of it. Kurt Busch already four wide. Yeah, we already saw a little bit of four wide right there in contact between Kyle Busch and Kevin Harvick, and usually that turns into a crash, but luckily did not turn into one right there. Kevin Harvick, like Gary already mentioned, the only safe driver coming into this race. Kurt Busch already getting into a bit of an awkward situation there, beating uh, one of those drivers below 40 points like Gary just mentioned. But like you said, Gary, this is the perfect place for, for Kurt Busch or Chastain to get themselves right back into it, but it's also the perfect place for them to be in a must-win situation next week in Holmes, or in, in Charlotte if, uh, if Kurt Busch or Chastain winds up wrecked out early here in Talladega which is a very good possibility of happening here with this wild and crazy race that we're going to have here, I would assume, here in Talladega. Harrison Burton in that number 21 uh, rookie driver bringing another rookie of Todd Gilliland up here in the mix. And then you got Austin Sendrick, three rookies currently in the top five. Truex there in the middle, obviously a completely different season for Truex here. And what's crazy, Jay, is Martin Truex Jr. had a way better season last year. Uh, was not replicated in NR 2003. This season, he went, goes winless so far in real life, and he's had an incredible season here in NR 2003 league. Leading the standings, 36 above the cut line. The first driver, uh, or the best driver on points that's not locked in with a win. The back straightaway still close together, four wide, but nothing doing yet from them here. Luckily, they're all keeping it clean, and I think Carvick might be able to escape this without a crash. Thankfully, even though he is advancing to the round of, uh, of eight, there are a lot of playoff drivers right in the vicinity of him, namely Joey Logano right there. Actually, just one playoff driver in the vicinity because Joey Logano has somehow found his way back to the back of the pack. A lot of the playoff drivers were able to get their way to the inside. Actually, I say a lot. Only a couple of them did. I thought it was a lot, but only a couple of them. Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, Alex Bowman all got their way to the inside. Perfect in this final lap. Three wide for the lead. Greg Biffle up there. Austin Cindric all the way on the outside. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. All of these guys, not playoff drivers. There goes Stenhouse up to the high side. Cody Ware is going to have the possibility of making a move to the inside. He does not. Stenhouse covers that off and through the trial for the final time to the start finish line. Ricky Stenhouse Jr. is going to win stage one. Cody Ware gets second. And I think Greg Biffle was either third or fourth in that stage. What a stage right there for some of those underdogs and then Joey Logano. Alex Bowman both getting stage points as well. We hope that they don't have these big stack ups. Hey, as crash. we say that, there's two cars, three cars, four cars, five cars, maybe playoff six drivers. and seven playoff drivers. Jay mentions that Chase Elliott's around. It doesn't look like there's any damage actually on the number nine. However, Jay, we definitely we just Kyle saw. Bush. Yes, Kyle Bush, he's all over the place up there. Chastain's a little bit slow trying to get out of the way because they actually are having to pull over to allow other cars to pass. And Hamlin, and oh my goodness, Danny Hamlin has gone from back to worse there's about five cars or so that have picked up quite a bit of damage there under caution here's a look chase elliott and Corey lajoy practically door slamming each other and it leads to that happening right there on the exit of turn two it's not even a stack up that causes this accident but you see the other drivers with nowhere to go ham and kyle bush included bunch of playoff drivers and the beef continues from atlanta between the nine and the seven and it ends denny hamlin's and austin Dillon's day 26 cars in this lead pack usually what you see about a, a, at the middle point of a, a race nowadays in a plate race but we are not quite there at that point yet but then you got eric jones you got suarez kozlowski uh chastain and chastain looks pretty good i think there's still some speed in a couple of cars back here jay maybe i think the the 99 the one maybe the six and the 17 they seem to be okay on speed but they were just held up and they had that disconnect and you can see they definitely have some speed what that really does gary is help out kurt bush a lot who obviously missed out on stage points there but is still inside the stage points positions right now uh and then chastain if he if he Chastain, if he can get back into this pack, I believe he has speed. So, Joey Logano again trying to make his way to the front right now. Gets to the inside of Todd Gillen, and it looks like he's going to be able to make the move work to the inside. Justin Haley, not the playoffs right behind him, but does have that yellow playoff banner. And Todd Gillen is going to be able to hold on for now for the lead. Behind Tyler Reddick here, you see two, even three wide, a couple of rows back, and they're going to catch him off turn four right here. And there goes uh, Cendrick, the first one to get him. He, ca he checks up, checks up pretty much the entire pack. Reddick goes to the outside, not going to block the cup, two outside lanes. Truex is getting blocked in that as well. There goes Bowman by on the outside. So the inside, the outside, they're the luckiest lanes here. But the middle lane, Gary, which contains a couple of playoff drivers, is going to get the most held up here.
I mean, if you're Tyler Reddick, Jay, do you even blame him for being in the way at this point? He's, he's, what, 14 points below the cut line coming into this race. He's got to come up with some creative way to try and keep his hopes alive. Anyway, Jay, look at these guys three wide now. I mean, we've only got, what, 25, 26 cars in this lead pack, but they are still scrapping it out here now. And once again, only a few playoff drivers in the mix, and it looks like it's going to be Byron coming out on top of that battle. DJ McLeod is able to hold off the inside lane continuously through three and four. Now has Christopher Bell trying to make a move to the inside. There goes Bell to the inside. No playoff drivers towards the front side uh, from William Byron right now. And there goes Bell to the inside, taking the advantage of getting the push from Chase Briscoe. And at the line, it is going to be Christopher Bell winning stage two, Gary. No playoff drivers winning the stages here in, in uh, stage one or stage two in Talladega. Byron might have been the only playoff driver inside that top ten. In fact, I think he is the only playoff Legano. driver inside that top ten getting stage points. Christopher Bell made the playoffs long lost in a tiebreaker to make it into the round of 12 to the driver that's just behind him, William Byron, as we head down into turn one. And there you see Kyle Larson joining him up there in the mix. But Jay, we've seen now uh, towards the end of stage two, of course, lap traffic is going to play a role here. And this time we have an extra, uh, what, about 15 laps of racing. Well, with the caution, a little bit over 10 extra laps of racing here on this third and final stage. But if it goes green the whole way, uh, we also cannot rule out a uh, green flag pit stump. Yeah, it, it's been a, a bit of a, I, don't, I wouldn't call it a weird race so far, but it's been a, a much, much calmer race so far in Talladega. And it's also been weird as well, because I guess, because a lot of the playoff drivers, even though we, I think we have six in the main pack right now, even though there's there's half the, the playoff field in this main pack, half them are not. And we've already got one DNF, that's Denny Hamlin. And, and we've already got three others that are on track struggling. Harvick, Reddick, and Kyle Busch, all three with big damage. Chastain not in this main pack, so... There's just a lot of things that have happened to these playoff drivers, but none of it being actual on-track racing. It was just all that one incident that we had under caution between... This is going to shake everything up right here. Alex Bowman's going to be the first one to deal with that number eight. He's going to stomp on the brakes. Bowman doesn't really necessarily need to take any unnecessary risks. And, well, he's certainly proven that. He did not bother even risking it there. He's going to get past the eight. He waits an extra five seconds. He does complete the pass. But look at the stack up there that Tyler Reddick is causing. And his playoff hopes are dwindling. We already know this is a position where he's going to likely have to win. As he has been able to lead a lot of the, the yellow flag. Oh, oh, the yellow flag is out. Yellow flag. Out, Gary. The yellow flag is waving here as they head down into turn one. The caution's going to be out. 17 laps to go, which completely destroys any strategy calls of coming in under green flag conditions. We'll, of course, look for what brought out the caution there. Pit stops happening. A lot of feel only here. We could not actually find why we're under caution. So we're just going to use the, uh, the Scott Miller uh, excuse and say we did not see what happened there. Right now, I don't think we're going to see uh, this continuation where we've seen BJ McLeod, Cody, where a lot of these kind of back markers run up front. I think the playoff drivers are going to know it's go time and they're going to head their way towards the front as this pack has been kind of awkwardly broke up on this restart, Gary. We've got pretty much no, uh, like, uh, nobody's together right now and forming up an actual big pack. It's just all one single file line with a little bit of two and three wide back here in the background as they all try and get it settled out. Daniel Suarez, but here is Truex out here today having a good run. And then Ryan Blaney, who's been flawless on the play tracks right now, might prove that and get himself into the round of eight today. And Martin Truex Jr. is... is had a really rough time at the play track recently, but so far today in Talladega, he's had a pretty darn good race. He's got a Toyota teammate of Kurt Busch right behind him as well, so uh, he, he can have some help there from that 45 car, and they're they're both going to need a lot of help, Gary, because they're already up on this outside lane. They need to be to the inside lane. The outside lane, we know, is going to have them uh, really get shuffled back, so right now, the 12 and the 14 also up there as well. Ryan Blaney, a playoff driver, leading the race for one of the few playoff drivers to actually lead in this race so far. He's got uh, Cody Ware right behind him as well, and there goes Ryan Blaney getting now passed by the 20th Christopher Bell, but his teammate of Austin Cindric, who was in that second pack, got his way up to the front pack and has made his way forward. Probably the fastest I've ever seen anybody go from the back of the pack to the front of the pack. Now helping his teammate Ryan Blaney up on this high side, but as you can see, it's going to be a losing battle. Christopher Bell is going to wind up taking the lead of this race eventually once we get to through the trial oval, down through turn one as well. May not have it at the line, which it looks like he will. White flag in the air. Christopher Bell, can he hang on one more time? Cody Ware is trying to beat him here into turn one. It doesn't look like anybody just can seem to get close enough uh, to the bank of that 20 but look at the drivers that he's got lined up behind him. Uh, Cody Ware, Michael McDowell, do they have anything here? Bell goes high, and oh my goodness, could this play a role? I don't think so. They're not quick enough. Down this back straight away for the final time. Jay, it doesn't look like anybody's going to beat this number 20 unless Cody Ware finds a little bit of magic here in 3 and 4 and on that front straightaway. 
no help at all right now for Cody Ware or anybody else behind Christopher Bell. It's all Christopher Bell off turn four. Still got to get all the way down to the triangle, though. Remember, the start finish line is beyond the, the triangle here in Talladega, and there is just still nothing coming for here for Cody Ware at all. It's going to be all Christopher Bell, it looks like, to the line. An easy win for Christopher Bell. Unfortunately, missed out on this round of the playoffs, but still gets a victory here in Talladega. That was an easy win for him. This pack all but what broke a up weird on the last finish. lap. It's, it's, yeah, very weird that the pack all but broke up on the last lap. So we took a look at what happened after it was just simply Ryan Blaney and, and the 47. The Senos both on the same lap ended up just off the pace, and it was simple as that. Uh, but you see the finishing on your screen here today. And Jay wrapping up Talladega going into the Charlotte Roval. We haven't calculated the points yet. Of course, we'll be doing live points next week uh, following along with the race, but we know...